Okay, this video is um, about my wife's garden beds in her 26 foot growing dome. Um, these garden beds are something we designed and I just wanted to go over a couple of the key steps we did to get to build them because I haven't seen anything quite like it in, the, uh, in the, what we've seen online. So these garden beds, um, for, the, for the outside garden beds around the growing dome, um, we built three. Um, and what they are is uh, cedar, um, just regular cedar 2x4s and 2x6s with um, galvanised roofing metal um, to act as the walls. Uh, one of the first things I uh, had to do was get um, some levels taken and for that I have a laser level but you could do this with a string line with um, you know, a little a spirit level or any type of level to, to find out whether the um, growing dome has actually been built flat. Ours had a slight dip in one corner um, and we as a consequence knew that these growing beds, we had to account for the fact that it was going to drop and we didn't want to you know, end up with a sloping garden bed, garden bed. So we took some levels to where our corners of the garden beds were going to be, we found out how, where, the, where this part of the growing dome was on each. Uh, once we'd done that, um, my wife figured out what shape she wanted for the garden beds and set some little flags in the ground and then each flag um, I used a little three inch um, auger that you can buy from Home Depot or Lowe's, a little garden seeding auger, and put it in a drill, and drilled down at each corner of each of these garden beds, about 12 inches, um, drilled out a three inch hole. And then inside that three inch hole, what I set is half inch EMT, which is um, a half inch electrical conduit. And you can see the top of it here. But that half inch EMT, uh, put that down in the hole, then got a couple little um, scoops of concrete, uh, which I'd mixed just from a regular sack of ordinary concrete, and set them, set a post in each uh, corner of each of these garden beds, this EMT, um, set that vertical and let that set for 48 hours um, to give us these, these uh, each corner, something for the, for the walls to, to not fall out with that concrete in there. These posts are pretty rigid. Once those posts are in the ground, Using our levels on each corner, we decided what height we wanted the garden bed to be. Um, and we had to cut little risers um, that sit, here, here's an example of one here. And that, there's a washer on top of the concrete, then a riser of three quarter inch EMT, and another washer. And we had to custom cut them to length to make sure that, the, because the top of concrete varies in height, depending on how much you put in each hole, cut those to length so that we ended up with a consistent um, level at this point on which to put the uh, put the cedar um, for the walls. So once we put those in and put another washer, a uh, larger size washer on each one of those um, three quarter inch little stub up pieces of EMT, we started cutting all the cedar rails. So we had a bottom rail, a top rail, we had some of the corners to connect into the existing structure, and then we had this interlocking arrangement um, at the at the sharp corners to give us support for the top rail. We did this kind of as an artistic look. We thought it looked nice. Um, and each one of these is obviously notched. So we've notched this one and then the, then the opposite notch on the adjacent one and just continued the pattern all the way up. Um, notching them out and then drilling, I think it's a three quarter inch hole through the center of the notch for, for it to sleeve over the, the EMT tubing. Once, that's in once that was all in place, and we'd done each garden bed, um, we then came and put the corrugated metal um, on the inside. For the corrugated metal, we got that from a metal supplier. It's not that expensive. Um, it's just regular, regular roofing corrugated metal that you'd see on a barn or anything. Um, but we needed to cut it down to the height um, we'd selected. And cut, to cut it, we actually used a uh, regular uh, circular saw or skill saw. Uh, with an old blade turned around backwards, so running in the reverse direction. It actually works very well for cutting this, um, this steel. So it's very noisy and, and all that, but once you've cut it, you, get, you bring it out here and start setting it on and make sure you set it so that, that one end of this corrugated steel has a slightly narrower, the, the one that sits in front, it has a slightly tighter spacing on the corrugation. And if you set it in front and then screw in through it, it expands the front one and you get a good seal in the, in the joint. Another important thing to know is the screws you should use to attach those is these 
um, sharp point roofing screws. So if you use the ones which have a little cutter on the front of them called self-drilling, you won't get good penetration into the wood because they'll overbore a hole in the wood. So make sure if you're going to do this technique, use these sharp point screws. I'd probably recommend inch and a half. These, these are one inch, but um, so they're a little bit short, but these would work. Inch and a half is even better. Other than that, um, once this is all done with all the corrugated steel wall in place, uh, we're putting a top rail on it, and that top rail is a 2x6 cedar uh, screwed down into the, the top rail of the, um, of, the, of the wall. These are just mitered cuts that uh, bisect each corner, so you have to measure those depending on your layout. Um, and then, yeah, that gives you a pretty rigid surface on which to sit, and these are all very very strong. This one over here, I mean, there's a tiny bit of flex in that, but with the top rail on it, it's even more rigid. So that's just a quick overview of what we did to build these garden beds. It might be of help, so I hope you enjoyed this video.